Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're finishing up uh, chapter four of First Peter uh, today. Um, as we um, have been saying, First Peter chapter four um, really is the the um, the call to arms uh, that he makes uh, to his readers. Um, this is a survival manual about surviving persecution. He's talked practically about, about relationships, about remembering who we are, about, about how we respond when we're interrogated. And then in chapter four, the call to arms, literally, arm yourselves. Uh, and, and he ends that first part of this um, inspiring section, this addressing of the troops uh, in verse 11, uh, verses 10 and 11 saying, you have to use the, the, the gifts, the blessings that God has given. You've got to use them right now. Take them in your hand like a tool and use them for each other. Uh, and remember that, um, that Jesus has dominion, period. And he ends that section with an amen. But then there's a um, be aware section in verses 12 through 19 before he starts talking about some practical things at the end of his letter. And that's what we're going to read today. And I'm going to read a couple of, um, of um, historical sources as well to illuminate these verses. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you for your testing as though some strange thing were happening to you. But to the degree that you share the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing so that also at the revelation of his glory, you may rejoice with exaltation. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. By no means let any of you suffer as a murderer or thief or evildoer or troublesome meddler. If anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not feel ashamed, but in that name let him glorify God. For it is time for judgment to begin with the household of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the outcome of those who do not obey the gospel of God. And if it is with difficulty that the righteous man is saved, what will become of the sinner? It's a quote from Proverbs chapter 11. Therefore, let those who also suffer according to the will of God entrust their souls to a faithful creator and doing what is right. This is going to be bad, and we're not going to get out of it. You shouldn't be surprised that this is happening. This has always happened to God's people. Jesus said this in, in John 15. You know, he, Jesus has told them this. This is what's going to happen. And like Jesus told him, he's telling them, this is what's going to happen. Don't be surprised. When he says a fiery ordeal, he means a fiery ordeal. I want to read to you from the annals of Tacitus. Um, and this is a Roman, Tacitus is a Roman historian writing it into the first century, beginning of the second century. About, about what happened to the Christians during Nero's persecution. And he writes, Nero offered his gardens for a spectacle and was exhibiting a show in the circus while he mingled with the people uh, in the dress of a charioteer. And it says, mockery of every sort was added to the deaths of these Christians. They were covered in skins of beasts and were torn by dogs and perished, were nailed to crosses, or were doomed to the flames and burnt to serve as a nightly illumination when daylight had expired. Hence, even for criminals who deserved extreme punishment, there arose a feeling of compassion for the Christians because it was not, it seemed, for the public good that they suffered, but to glut one man's cruelty that they were being destroyed. They were burnt. They were burnt alive. They were covered in tar and burnt alive on top of poles as, as uh, torches for the night so that they could continue to party. That's what was happening. That's the level of cruelty that they were suffering in Rome and were about to suffer in, 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 uh, in Turkey. Um, and so he's reminding them what, the things that he's already said, oh, this is happening, this is going to happen. But like Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, it just means that you are fellowshipping with Jesus, you're sharing with Jesus, and it means that you're achieving your immediate victory as someone who belongs to God. Don't, don't you be uh, arrested for any kind of 
uh, law breaking other than your faith. Don't do that. They need to know. They need to know who we are. And that message was so strong. And, and they believed that. And they practiced that for, for many generations to come. In the Epistle to Diognetus, and I've mentioned this before, this is written by someone who is referred to as Mothetes, but that just means disciple, although that could be a name, written sometime in the middle second century, so from 130 to about 150, to a, a ruler, Diognetus, and he's describing who Christians are, and he says, they live in their native countries, but as aliens. They share all things as citizens and endure all things as foreigners. Every foreign land is their homeland, and every homeland is foreign to them. They marry, as do have all, and they bear children, but they refuse to abandon their children. They share their meals, but not their wives. Their lot is cast in the flesh, but they do not live according to the flesh. They pass their time upon the earth, but their citizenship is in heaven. They are obedient to the appointed laws, but they surpass the laws in their own lives. They love all and are persecuted by all. That's exactly what Peter is telling them to do and to be. And, and maybe a hundred years later, Christians are telling their rulers, this is exactly who we are. They've stayed true to that vision, to that standard that Peter sets. And then he says this. <laughs> he says this. This is a time of judgment. Does he mean final judgment? Not necessarily. The day of the Lord is any time when everything changes and everything is starting to change. And it's going to culminate in the fifth century. It doesn't happen all at once. It happens little by little, but then it happens. The fall of the Roman Empire, which John is going to write about in the book of Revelation, it's going to fall and it's going to have an, an impact on the history of Europe and the Mediterranean world for many centuries to come. So you could be talking about that, but the things that he's saying are also true about final judgment. If it's hard for us to get through this time, what about people who have no faith? What about people who are disobedient to God? How are they going to survive uh, with their spirits intact? Well, they're not. They're just not. Faith is the, is the, is the, is the, uh, is the way of salvation. It's, it's the way we get through this. Okay. Starting in chapter 5, he's going to go back to being a little more practical. He's going to talk to the leaders, because he needs to, because they're going to have to see the flock through this difficult time. We'll pick up there in chapter 5, verse 1 next time. Thank you for joining me for another 5 Good Minutes.